Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video will be looking at the following two dot points. Identify the major groups of substances found in living cells and their uses in cell activities. And plan, choose equipment or resources and perform a first-hand investigation to gather information and use available evidence to identify the following substances in tissues. So the substances we'll be looking at are glucose, starch, lipids, proteins, and chloride ions. So we can automatically see that these two dot points fit hand in hand. So firstly, we need to do a little bit of um, identification of what the different major groups of substances are, and then carry out an investigation to find out what types of foods contain these different substances. So we're going to start by having a look at the chemicals that are in cells. Okay, so all cells are made from a particular group of chemicals, and this can be broken down into two uh, main groups being inorganic and organic chemicals. So if we start off by looking at inorganic chemicals, these include simple molecules like water, carbon dioxide and oxygen, as well as mineral ions such as calcium, nitrates, phosphates and chlorides. So although these are often considered as of lesser importance, it's always good to remember that all living things are about 75 to 95% water. So without water, obviously these organisms are going to suffer greatly. So the other major group are our organic chemicals. Organic chemicals are based on the element carbon, which can form chains, rings, and networks, and so build the very complex molecules needed to make a living cell. Many are polymers, which, as we said in the previous video, are smaller units that are joined together to make longer chain molecules. So there are four main categories of organic chemicals that we need to know about. The first one is the carbohydrates. So Carbohydrates can include monosaccharides, which are simple sugars such as glucose, disaccharides, which are made up of two monosaccharides joined together, such as sucrose, which makes up our table sugar, and polysaccharides, which can be made up of many different molecules joined together. And some examples of those include starch, glycogen, and cellulose. So three really important substances when it comes to how cells function. So some of the uses of carbohydrates include um, sugars are energy chemicals. As we know, sugar is used uh, in the process of respiration. Glucose is made by plants during the process of photosynthesis, and then it is used in cellular respiration both in plants and animals. Starch and glycogen are polymer molecules used to store sugars as food reserves. Starch is the main nutrient chemical in the plant food that we eat. So we sometimes hear things being referred to as starchy food. In particular, potatoes are quite um, high in starch. And lastly, cellulose and lignin. So these are used by plants structurally. Cellulose makes up the cell wall of all plant cells and lignin is used to reinforce the walls of the veins in plants. Okay, so even though uh, we consume them when we eat plant material. They're not really of much use to us in comparison to the sugars, starch, and glycogen. The next group of organic compounds we're going to look at are proteins. So proteins are the main structural chemicals of organelles, cells, bone, skin, and hair. So basically all life is built from proteins. Proteins are polymers that are made up of amino acid uh, molecules that are joined together to form chains. So we'll be looking a lot closer at protein synthesis in the year 12 course. But what we basically need to know at the moment is that um, smaller subunits called amino acids join together in different ways to form many different proteins that carry out many, many different functions, not just structurally, but also uh, in chemical reactions. Enzymes are a form of proteins as well. The next one are our nucleic acids. So these are the most complex of all our organic chemicals. So DNA is the genetic information of every cell. So it makes us who we are. It is our blueprint of life, which is where we get the name for the year 12 topic that we'll be doing when we look at genetics and evolution. RNA is a messenger that is sent out from the nucleus to control all cell activities. So DNA controls what RNA is formed and then RNA goes out into the cell, out into the cytoplasm and takes care of a whole range of different things. 
So just like proteins, DNA is a huge polymer of sugar, phosphate, and bases. And what happens is they then coil in this double helix shape to fit inside the cell. And lastly, our last group of organic chemicals are lipids. So these are the fats and oils that are necessary for cells to function properly. So all cell membranes are built from lipids and proteins. So they make the phospholipid bilayer, which we'll be looking at in future lessons. And lipids are used as a way to store excess food energy and carbohydrates can be converted to fat for storage for later use as energy, uh, energy requirements are increased. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to focus mostly on the organic chemicals and what they do, but we'll also be having a look at some of the inorganic chemicals in our investigation. So in our first hand investigation, you will carry out a laboratory investigation to learn how to do some simple chemical tests, which identify these important substances that we've just mentioned. These tests will rely on a reagent, which is a chemical solution that changes color. So it's sort of like an indicator, but we don't call it an indicator because um, it's actually a good question why we don't call it an indicator. It's classified as a reagent as it shows a positive test for the different substances, whereas an indicator will test for the same thing but give us sort of a scale of what uh, or where that particular substance lies on that scale. So the reagents that we'll be using are Benedict's solution, which is a reagent that will tell us whether glucose is present or not. Iodine solution tells us whether starch is present or not. Biorase solution for proteins and silver nitrate solution for chloride ions. So basically, we will have a known solution of glucose, starch, proteins and chloride ions. And we will be able to test each of those with those different solutions and determine what the positive test is first. And then we'll be given some food substances or food samples that we will then carry out all of those tests again for each sample to see which of those particular substances are found. Uh, and lastly, just uh, because we don't actually have a solution reagent that will help us to test for lipids, the test for lipids is quite easy. Simply use a small piece of brown paper. You rub the lipids or the substance that we believe may contain lipids on it. And if it becomes see-through, then lipids are present. And if not, then there's no lipids present. So this will be quite an in-depth investigation where you'll need to work well in your groups, follow some very detailed guidelines and carry out your investigation to determine what foods contain which of the different substances that are needed. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you.